as Africa Man. When we introduced Africa Man last year, we wanted all of us to understand that we are Africa and we are Africans first and foremost before uh, we are South Africans, but also we are the citizens of the world. The commemoration of Africa Month is inspired by the vision of the four pairs and the founders of uh, the Organization of Unity uh, who gathered in Addis Ababa on the 25th of May, 1963. And uh, as we know, uh, the, uh, the successor is now the AU. The Department of Arts and Culture has been entrusted with this daunting task of leading and coordinating Africa Month celebrations. We have danced this month. We sang. We showed our fashion, our African fashion. We exchanged ideas. We did all. And in two days from now, we'll be closing this festival of ideas. We, we, we thought that one of our foremost uh, thinker and writers, uh, Professor Soika, to be the one who closed this activities of this year, especially because we are Africa, from Cape to Cairo, from Madagascar to Morocco. Our fervent desire is to promote the values that stimulate true Pan-Africanism, nation building and social cohesion. As championed by our forebears like Kwame Nkrumah, Jomo Kenyatta, Nelson Mandela, Julius Nyerere, Is Pixliga Isakaseme and others. We remember Ned Nagasa today as an African who, did, who dedicated his life to serving his society and left an indelible footprint or footprints in our collective memory. He worked as a journalist for historic and highly reputable publications, including Ilanga La Senadal, Drum Magazine, Golden City Post, and Rand Daily Mail. In 1963, he, in 1963, he founded the very first black-owned literary magazine in South Africa, the classic, which served as the springboard for careers of many South African writers. He engraved his name in the public memory as a courageous and principled visionary who never compromised his values. Nakasa was the epitome of nation building and social cohesion when the terms only existed as abstract phenomena. The ideals of the free and democratic society which Nagasa espoused as back as the 1950s and the same ideals that we are striving to achieve today. His work remains relevant to our current condition more than 50 years after his tragic passing. It was the tyranny of apartheid government that pushed Nagasa out of his land of birth, something that made him to declare himself the native of nowhere. It took decades of canvassing the Nagasa family, civil society, the media, particularly uh, SANEF, which I, I, I would um, request all of us to give them a round of applause. This commitment and devotion, as uh, the program director has uh, alluded to, by uh, SANEF and practitioners in the field of writing like uh, Matata Tzedu. I heard you said it's Tata Tzedu, uh, Matata. <laughs> but uh, all the same, because it's about Tata. So we, uh, yeah. 
I think uh, we, we should actually uh, encourage everybody uh, in our society uh, to stand for what they think is important in life, for what they think is going to take society forward, no matter what it takes. And we also have to thank the family, particularly Mark ladies, uh, Nagasa, who um, when, when she narrate, narrated the story of their wish to have uh, Ned Nagasa here back home, uh, she told me that uh, as a family we have done everything. Um, and, and that year she was, uh, uh, she had uh, three legs. No, she was walking in three legs. And she said, uh, I, I, I've developed the third leg in this road of trying to ensure that my brother is brought back home. Um, and uh, to which my, my response was that if, if it's a wish, then he's going to come back home. Um, and, and, and we thought it was as simple as that. That's why Nagasa is back home. The apartheid regime denied him entering to his ancestral land, even in his death. 50 years after his first exit, and 20 years after the dawn, of, the dawn of democracy in South Africa, we were able to bring him back and his mortals, his mortal remains to his home soil in August 2014. Nagasa's homecoming was a momentous occasion and a key milestone in our democratic dispensation. It was received with <clears throat> it was received with much deserved adulation and gratitude by observers the world over. The occasion to bring him back represented the triumph of human spirit against the unjust and humane laws of the apartheid regime. It was about reclaiming the spirit, the dignity and the citizenship that had been taken away by the ruthless forces of the past. To the family, it was a closure of a horrendous chapter that had been an albatross in their subconscious for almost 50 years. We can now proudly proclaim Ned Nagasa is a native of nowhere no more. Ladies and gentlemen, At this point, I'm reminded of a simple yet provocative question that was asked by internationally acclaimed Nigerian born writer Ben Okri during the Africa Man public lectures last year. Whilst engaged in intense discussions about the modalities of decolonizing the mind, as prompted by Mukiwa Thiongo's seminal essay of the same title. Okri asked a question. What happens after the mind has been decolonized? In other words, what follows once people have been decolonized? What I could deduce from uh, Okri's question is that he was challenging us to do thorough self-introspection to think beyond the spectacle of the issues that confront us at the present moment. In other words, exorcising the demons cannot be an end on itself. We need to empower the formerly colonized and invest in our future so that we are better than what we were before. Ben Oakley would say, our future is greater than our past. It is against this backdrop, ladies and gentlemen, that I took a conscious decision to ensure that Nagasa's legacy does not diminish with the reburial of his mortal remains. As part of celebrating Nagasa's return to his ancestral land, we introduce essay and debate competitions for learners. To us, these initiatives were less about winning but more about contributing to the development of young minds as part of 
at Nagasa's Lagos. In view of the fact that young people struggle to find jobs and that internship is a prerequisite for securing employment, especially in the media, fraternity and other fraternities. We collaborated with the South African National Editors Forum, Sanya, which offered internship as one of the prizes for the winners. Three of the winners in the essay competition were offered internships in some of the most prestigious media houses in South Africa. Earlier this year, one of the winners of the debate competition traveled to the United Kingdom where he was announced as the winner of the Magna Carta International Essay Speech Competition, beating competitors from all over the world. I'm proud to say that uh, this young man is firmly treading on the footsteps of Nagasa, as he was now, and, and as he has now been admitted to study at Harvard University in the United States of America. And that young man, ladies and gentlemen, is Mfundo Hade, and we are honored to have him here with us this evening. Mfundo, can you stand? It must be seen. It must be felt. You must touch the legacy. <laughs> 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 